Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. This week as America awakens from the nightmare visited upon Boston, as many painfully start the long road to recovery, we begin to comprehend the enormity of the violence that was visited upon us. The Sarnaya family, a father, a mother, two sons, were granted political asylum in 2002. We opened our arms to them, showered them with food and money and housing and education and all the freedoms of American citizens. And look at how they were paid. <laughs> And here's how Tamerlan's mother describes her son. But all around, he was really nice and very, like, he never rejected anyone American just because they are Americans. Really? He never rejected anyone American just because they were American? After opening our arms to you, we should be grateful that you and your terrorist son didn't reject us? And listen to what this loving mother says of her 19-year-old son clinging to life. My other son is killed, so I don't care. I don't care if my other son's going to be killed today. So I want to add here this. If I don't care, I don't care if I'm going to get killed too. Okay? And I will say a lot of success. Does that sound like a mother already devastated by the death of one son? Or a woman on her own radical jihad? willing to sacrifice yet another son in honor of their God. And get this one. Why did they to the, you know, Guantanamo or whatever? Why didn't they kill him? Why didn't they send him to Guantanamo? So now you knew he was a Muslim jihadist? That you raised a Muslim jihadist? If he's innocent, why would he even need to go to Guantanamo? And get this one. Why did I even go? Why? I thought America is going to like protect us, our kids. It's going to be safe for like any reason. But it happened. <laughs> I was <sick. laughs> My kids just, America took my kids away from me. Really? America took your sons from you? They killed Americans. They injured more than 200, blinded, deafened, and blew the legs and arms off of innocent civilians, turning the city of Boston into a lockdown war zone of casualties, amputees, and a future of post-traumatic stress. And America should protect you? Your sons killed us. We're the ones who needed the protection. And you ask, why did I even go there? I'll tell you why. You came to suck the fat of our land, to take our money, to educate your terrorist sons, to steal from us, to go on public assistance, to get housing and food stamps while you drive your Mercedes Benz, all the while your family going back and forth to the very country from which you claim political refuge. Might you guys have lied on that old political asylum petition? Maybe we should add a charge of perjury to your list. After all, you're a thief. You're charged with theft. You're put on a terrorist watch list. Your son is charged with beating his girlfriends. Your other son is a pothead. And neither of them working or employed, traveling back and forth. Most Americans can't even afford a vacation. They're losing their homes. If they're lucky enough to have a job, they live check to check. The elderly choose between food and medicine. Servicemen and women are getting cuts in their benefits. And then, when hardworking Americans want to know how you guys can afford this, the governor of Massachusetts refuses to reveal what kind of taxpayer assistance your son Tamerlan got on the grounds of privacy. Privacy? What privacy? Governor, you take our money and you give it to this dirt bag and you want to protect his privacy? You want to protect his rights? He's dead. He's a terrorist. He has no rights. But then again, it's okay to invade my privacy and publish my name and where I live on an interactive map because I'm a lawful gun owner. And now, mother of jihadis, the Obama administration at breakneck speed rushes in a federal judge 
stops the FBI in the middle of a high-value interrogation to arraign your son and shower him with even more rights. The right to remain silent, the right to an attorney, unparalleled medical care, all the protections of our Constitution. Why? Because the President and his buddy, Eric Holder, want the world to think better of us. They want the world to see American justice at its best. Really? They hate us. They chant death to America. They burn us in effigy. We give them billions in F-16s and armored tanks as they laugh their way to the bank and the airfield. And when they kill us, we don't even send in reinforcements like the four fighting in Benghazi. And we want them to like us? Honestly, I don't much care about what the world thinks of us or our criminal justice system. They come here to kill us and we worry about what they think of us. I don't want to show the rest of the world how our system works. I honestly don't give a damn. And okay, mother of jihadis, they say you're planning on coming here. But hope springs eternal and maybe the system will work and that watch list you're on will stop you. But I imagine they'll let you in. And if they do, I can only pray that they'll activate that outstanding bench warrant against you for larceny. And what's that? You can't afford an attorney? Too damn bad. And I have an idea. You and your son should be stripped of your citizenship, tried in a military tribunal in Guantanamo. Lady, you shouldn't be allowed here. We don't want you here. We should not be required to breathe the same air as you. We should not be required to suffer the indignity of your presence.